Good afternoon and welcome to uh, the Anita Gay Show about great relationships today. We are going to spend some time talking about how to build great relationships and what those great relationships look like, what it means to be in a great relationship, what it means to be a person in a great relationship. We'll just deal with all those topics today. So, of course, if you have any questions, the uh, number to dial in is 323-843-6154. Again, 323-843-6154. So, we talked a little bit about in the description of our show today that great relationships require time. Let's define what that means. The first thing you got to realize in every relationship, time time is going to be of the essence because it's what you have premium. It's your premium time. It's what you give to the other person. It is not what you give to your television. Uh, ESPN is my favorite example of what distracts men from a relationship. Now, is that fair? Absolutely not. Absolutely not fair. Why? Well, we don't have something like uh, ESPN to compare it to. So we have Grey's Anatomy or HGTV, but it's the thing that you do that takes away from your time with your mate. What does that mean? One of my uh, classmates once said that she could go into every single room in her home and turn on the television, and it was on ESPN. She did it just drove her crazy. So I don't understand why every TV in my house has to be on ESPN. He's been in every room, and in every room he turned on the television, and every television has on ESPN. Well, what I found out is that they're not really listening to ESPN. He's not really listening to it. That's what they told me. Not really listening to ESPN. He is listening for the noise. He sorts through the stuff, and he has a recognition, hearing recognition that says, well, that's my team and I'm now going to listen. They're not actually listening to the whole the whole show. Then the other thing I found out is they repeat over and over again, because, of course, I'm sitting here, didn't you get it the first time? Well, no. Remember, they were listening to a certain thing. Once that thing passes, they tune out for the rest of the things. Well, here's the problem with that. That's a practice behavior. That behavior is practiced in relationships. He listens to his, he a certain thing which is the inflection of your voice for a question. And then he answers that question, and he goes back to non-listening. Well, is that fair, Anita? Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, no, maybe not. But here's the thing. We have so much evidence that we're not listening in relationships until it doesn't matter whether it's fair. What do I mean by that is that you've got to realize that we have – things we want our spouse or our mate to do. When we are doing those things, when they're doing those things, then then you get what you need. What does that mean? What does it mean you get what you need? Well, you get what you need because you are then able to uh, go on vacation. I want to go to such and such. Well, he heard you. He took it, you know, he took that to heart. Well, I want to go to the ball game. Well, she heard you and she bought the ticket. Or she knows that your favorite team is whatever it is, and then she buys you tickets and plane tickets to get to that location. Well, how does that make us, you know, decide to be great in a relationship? And then who made that decision? Well, like I said, everybody's definition of a great relationship is going to be different. It's going to be different. My definition is time spent. I want to spend the type of time with my mate that I want to spend, meaning that on a Saturday, if we wake up late, sleep in, get up and just have a leisurely breakfast, just kind of jaunt out and look at something, maybe we take a drive. But the goal is just to spend time with each other, not do anything major, just spending time in each other's presence. Now, my mate might not define that the same way. He may say that, well, you know what, I want us to do such and such. We got to go play basketball, then we got to go play soccer, then we got to go play hockey, then we got to play golf. He wants to do stuff. The compromise is that once he gives me my leisurely breakfast, then we can do whatever you want. 
Maybe that's my compromise. But what makes that great is that I ask him and he asked me and everybody was accommodated. Is it going to be that way all the time? No. But what it shouldn't be is he is asked all the time what he wants to do and you do those things versus you saying, well, today I want to go to the zoo. Well, I want to play golf. We played golf last Saturday. I want to play golf today. We played golf last Saturday. At some point, he's got to get the picture that, well, shoot, we played golf last Saturday and probably the Saturday before that and the Saturday before that. All she has to do is go to the zoo. We're only going to be there a couple of hours. And maybe after that, she'll say, well, you know, we went all that I thought it was going to be. Maybe we could go play golf. Eventually, you're going to get what it is you've asked for. And either way, something's going to happen. So what does it mean to be in a great relationship? <clears throat> When I mention align or alike, the goal in aligning a great relationship is that you have the same goal, meaning my goal is for you to be content, happy, satisfied. That's my goal. That is the goal, content, happy, satisfied. If you're content and if you're happy, if you're satisfied, there's very little wandering that's going to be done. Wandering, I mean. Um unengaged in a relationship, anything that takes your focus off the relationship up and including the point of cheating or seeking the solace of another. So how do I go about gathering myself to be a great person in a relationship? Well, you know, recently I had a conversation with a friend of mine who is a uh, a family marriage and family therapist, and I said to her, I said, you have to be who you want to be in the relationship. If I expect unconditional love, then I have to be that person. I have to love him unconditionally. You have to love her unconditionally. And when you love someone unconditionally, then you're able to give them what they need. You're able to give them the love that they need at the time that they need it because they've asked you for it, and you feel you feel like giving to them. You feel like it. One of my friends is a minister. He's always talking about, well, you just feel like it. You just feel like it. You feel like giving that person of yourself, them benefiting from who you are and what you are in the relationship, what you have to offer in that relationship. Well, who am I in a relationship? Who am I right now in the relationship? Who am I to that person? Am I their friend? Am I their confidant? Am I the person who they look to for, you know, information? Is it somebody who they can depend on and confide in? Who is that person? Who says I'm that person? Who am I to my mate? When you discover who you are to your mate, then you're more easily able to be that person for them. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know what I want to be to you who you need me to be. I want to be able to talk to you. I want to be able to go do things with you, be a companion of sorts, and put myself in a situation where I am um, on your mind, where you look to call me first for whatever is going on. Well, does that make sense in all situations? Is everybody able to do that? Not necessarily. But the point is going to be is am I supposed? am I doing this when I'm supposed to be doing it? Meaning when my mate calls me, am I available to him? And when I call my mate, is he available to me? Well, what do you mean by available? Well, if I say to you, I need you to meet me at the corner of X and Y, and at that particular time, we're going to do A, B, and C. So let's talk, for example, about, you know, we're going to eat at dinner. So I want to meet you on West Time, and I want to go and have lunch and dinner at my favorite hamburger place. Well, oh, I'm busy. Really? Busy doing what? Well, um, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to do something else. And Really? Hmm. Okay, so the one time you let it go. Well, I'm going to let that go. The next time you say, well, wait a minute. The last time I said something, you said you had something else to do as well. 
after a while, your mate is going to get a little bit disgruntled and say, you know what, don't worry about it. I can find somebody else to go with to do blah, blah, blah. At which point, what do you say? What do you do? Do you say, well, um, I'm going to get it figured out and make time for your mate? Or are you going to find yourself in a situation where you don't have access to your mate anymore? Because clearly, your mate deserves your time. That's what you're in a relationship for, is to spend time with one another. Well, I'm so busy. I've got so much going on. I'm really into my career right now. I really, you know, I have a lot of priorities. Well, then why don't you release that person as your mate? And that person can go on to do what that person needs to do, and then you can go on and do what you need to do. Why are you tied into a committed relationship where the expectation is that when they can't see you, they can't see anybody else? Like if you're in a committed relationship, then you should be able to be committed to that relationship, and likewise, you should be able to take care of that relationship better than what you're doing. Your mate should not have to beg you for time. That's the most precious element you got. And when that person who is special to you asks you for it, there shouldn't be a whole lot of negotiation going on. Shouldn't just be a whole lot of, you know, just shouldn't be. So you got to decide, okay, if, in fact, I am going to not spend the type of time my um my mate is asking of me, then what am I willing to do? What am I willing to do? What am I willing to do for my mate? What am I willing to do to spend time with my mate? What am I willing to do to make my mate happy? What am I willing to do to make him or her comfortable and make him or her and give him or her what it is that they're asking of me. So what are you what are you gonna do? What are you going to do? So nobody actually ever answers that question. So you gotta decide what to do. Now We've got a um, we've got a chance to love a person, to be in a great relationship with a person, to give this person the best of what we are and the best of who we are and what we have. We have a chance for that. What we're not clear about is how we're going to make that work. One of the things that I said is that great relationships require time. Time, or great relationships require work. Work requires time, and time requires presence. What kind of work are we talking about? It's not like a job, right? It's not that kind of work. But the kind of work it is, is one where we are considering what does it mean to be with this individual? What kind of work does that require? What kind of work is needed? Well, for me, and it's different for everybody, my my work looks like time. My work looks like effort given to and energy given toward what's going on in my life. I'm hosting this radio show. I'm the author of several books. I'm a minister. I teach school. I have an online class for writing. You know, I have a lot of stuff going on. I didn't mention that I'm a parent. I also work full time. But I've got to make time for my mate as I need my mate to make time for me. Do I always have the type of time I need to do everything I want to do all effectively at the same time? No, I don't. I'm a student. I'm getting my Ph.D. But at the point at which I have to say that I am going to do um, 
all these things, I've got to prioritize. My mate has to be, like, real close to the top underneath God. Because if there's somebody I say I care about, realize that I want to care about you for the rest of my life, however long that is. So if that's the next 40 years, then we definitely want to give credit and credence to that for the next 40 years, for the next 49 years, or the next 53 years. But it's not for the next 49 or 53 days. School is going to last 450 days more, whole year, and the rest of this year. So say 365 plus whatever's left of this year, so 100, so 450 days school's going to last. Well, that's temporary. All, all stretches of the, the definition, that is temporary. Parenting is not temporary, but the amount of attention diminishes. You get the parent hands on up close and personal, up front in their face for 18 years. That's less than 49 years. And they're overlapping. They're running concurrent. So then let's talk about jobs and you're going to try to retire at 60, 65. So for some of us, that's roughly 20, 30 years from now. So that's still shorter and less time than 49 years away from today. So still, if you're going to spend a longer period of time with something, then that thing is the priority. So that makes my mate the priority. That makes my mate the focus. That makes my mate the person who's in charge. That person is right under God and says, okay, here we go. I am second to God and God alone. So what that means is that I've got to put those other things around him and not in front of him, and then maybe we can work on my stuff together. A friend of mine told me one time, he said, you need to marry somebody smarter than you. And I said, well, how am I going to manage that? He started laughing. He says, yeah, it's going to be hard to do. But... The um the thing that you got to understand is that when I put that person in that position, when I put that person at that level, when I put that person in that that spot, then they feel. They feel important to me. They know that they're important to me. And so when I ask for the moon, the stars, and the, the the everything, then I'm not likely to get a no. I'm not likely to get a, I can't believe she just asked me that. Because he knows how important he is to me. He knows how important he is for me to be happy, and I'm going to make him happy in that same fashion. So what do you do? What do you do with that? What do you say? How does that person know that they are very important to you? Well, again, it's their it's their perception. Do I try to spend time with him? Check. Does he know that it's important for me to spend time with him? Check. When he says I want to go do X, Y, Z, I say yes. Check. If he says, well, I want to do such and such and such, and he knows I may not like it or care for it in particular, but I try anyway, check. She know if he plays rugby, and I don't know how to play rugby, but I try, check. Because in the end, that's what we're here for. We're here to be each other's companions, provide companionship, that type of thing. If you're not doing those things, why are you in that relationship with that person? Why? Makes zero sense. So we talk about presence. One of the things about presence that's very important is that there are a lot of people who think, well, golly, I want to be in a situation where I just have you in my presence. When I'm in your presence, we're able to talk and dialogue. You've always got that phone in your hand. You've always got that laptop in your lap. 
you always doing something else. When do I get your undivided attention? Well, is that the same as time on either? Well, not really. It's your presence. You can be in the same room with somebody and not be present in the room. You know how it is when you're at work. Same thing. You're in the room but not present in the room, meaning that you're in the room but nothing else is going on. You don't know what's happening around you. It's not important to you. You're just in the room, but you're not present in the room. You're not actively engaged in the conversation. You're not participating. You don't know what that person is doing. You don't know what they're thinking about. You haven't asked them any questions. You don't know what they're doing over there because you're doing something else. You may be entertaining somebody else on the phone or Internet or Facebook, but at the end of the day, your mate is feeling left out. Your mate is trying to figure out what is so important over there that I can't get his or her undivided attention. And so let's be real clear. It's not somebody, just anybody. It's your mate. It's the person, again, who you said, I like you. I like you a lot. I like you enough for you to be in my space. Because truth be told, it's a dozen other people who might want that same spot. It's a dozen other people who would say, I'll take it. I'll take the space. I'll get in that spot. It's a dozen other people, at least, that you know of, who you might want that spot or they might want to be in your space. Is that fair? No, it's not. Is it something we're working for? Absolutely not. Is it something that we should be working toward? No, because we need to give that time that work time, that work time, that energy effort to our mate and be present in the room. There's something about an audible silence. That audible silence is going to give you the idea that you're not on the mind of a person who you're trying to spend your time with and talk to. It's not possible. It's simply not possible. Why is that? It's not possible because we don't give them that we don't give them that ability. We don't give them the ability to have what we've got going on. We don't give them that ability. We don't give them that ability to be successful. We don't give them that ability to be great. We don't make it reasonable for them. You know that there are people right now who you know that details of their relationship, but their person doesn't have a clue, completely clueless. Well, why is that? We don't know. Why would you do that? No one knows. Well, why is it that if you can't get to your person, if you can't access your person, then why is it that you want to be with that person? Why would you want to do that? If we just answer that, we really would have it going on. But here's how you make that happen in your own relationship. Let's talk about that. We have about four more minutes. And here's what happens in that relationship. You be a great person. Be what you expect in a relationship. Do the thing that you think is good in a relationship. And remember why, and this is the key, remember why you have been in this relationship. Remember that. Remember why you're in that relationship. You're not in that relationship for any other reason than to be committed to that person. If you're in there for another reason, then I hope everybody's on the same page. But more importantly than that, you just got to remember, I am in this relationship because I like this person. Something about them stimulates my mind, um, fuels my heart. It allows me to figure out what's going on. Who who am I to be in this relationship? I want to be in this relationship with this person. And so you've got to figure that out. You've got to figure out what does it take to be in a relationship with this person successfully because I want to be successful here. Do those things that are important to you. Don't just say, well, I'm good, I'm good where I'm at. No, don't do that. Don't do that. 
Why? Because you have to be able to say, I want to um, be better than that. I want to be better than what I think is happening. I want to be better than that. I want to be better than, you know, this is the best I got. What do you mean this is the best you got? Be a better person. Be the person who says, I am going to do everything I can to do everything I know how to do to do the best for this relationship. And I want to love my person completely and unequivocally at any time, at all times. What does that look like? Well, it looks like, hey, I... I'm in a relationship, and in that relationship, I've got to do this to make it great. My mate likes this. You know, there's some simple things that every relationship needs. You've got to make that happen for your people. You've got to make that happen for your person. That that relationship is, is simple. That relationship is, is extremely simple. They only want a few things. They only want you to tell them, that you care about them through that evidence, be it time, be it presence, or be it energy. It's going to take you a little bit of extra work to understand what she meant when she said, I want to paint the room green. Well, she didn't mean the green off of the Green Bay Packers. She meant some sage, sexy green that you come out of Home Depot and mix in paint for hours and hours. That's what she meant. you got to ask enough questions to understand that, though. You gotta ask enough questions to get that together. So what else happens? What do, what do you do after that? Well, you gotta give her enough tools to be successful in your relationship with you. What does that mean? Be angry for two weeks because she stated her mind. That's on you. You gotta be angry about that. That's on you. That's gonna be too bad if you can't get it figured out. That's going to be too bad. And that's really sad because you can't, you know, get around your situation. So being successful requires work, meaning that you've got to exert some energy. You've got to put out some effort. You have got to do things that are required of the relationship. So at that particular point, you also have to, Put in some time. She's going to want your time. Your time can't go to, and your time as a woman also can't go to just a bunch of frivolous stuff. It's got to go to things that mean something that add value. And then there's your presence. I am a firm believer in Facebook and the telephone. I have both of those apparatuses. But I do believe that it's going to cause a lot of problems in relationships if people don't learn how to strategize and put that to people down. You have got to decide, is it more important to talk to her or him than it is to be telling people and checking in where you are and, you know, noting and commenting on everything you see or hear. So at any rate, use it with a lot of discretion. We have a lot of things to overcome every day. And in great relationships, those things are attacked every day. Who you are as a person is attacked every day. There's going to be somebody who attracts your attention um, cosmetically. But is it worth all that? Anyway, be the person you want to be in the relationship. I look forward to our time speaking again real soon. Thank you so much. You have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.